What's up guys, back again with another video, this time for an update to the fine-tuning GPT repo. Those features include, but are not limited to, Docker and weights and biases support. Docker will take care of the headache of setting up the repo, as many software related to AI has, and weights and biases will allow you to more easily track your experiments. So let's go ahead and get started. One last thing before getting started, this video will be more about the update and new features on the repo. If you want a more overview of fine tuning in general, I recommend you watch the video that pops up now. Let's go ahead and get started by scrolling down to the update section of the readme. Here we have some of the requirements that are needed to fine tune with Docker. So the requirements are a sufficient NVIDIA GPU, typically with at least 24 gigabytes of VRAM. You could use cloud offerings, and if you do, I suggest an A100. And it does cost a bit, but it has a good speed and a high amount of VRAM to make up for it. I will be using two RTX 3090s for fine tuning in this video. I'm not sure if Windows is supported, so I recommend using a Linux machine, specifically Ubuntu, as most of the documentation online is uh, for Ubuntu. Then you're going to need a sufficiently modern version of Docker, and if you don't have a Docker installed, you can go ahead and look up how to do that or look up a video on how to do that. You're gonna need NVIDIA Docker installed to allow you to pass a GPU through into the container. And if you don't know how to do this, there's the official link to the official documents from NVIDIA right here. And you're also going to need to make sure that you have the latest NVIDIA drivers installed. You can check out the web tool from NVIDIA to install them through this. Um, and we have an example how to do that on a 64-bit Linux system for an A100. So, this we get command will download at the time of making this video the latest CUDA drivers and you need to change the permissions with this command here and then install them with this command here. Now that we have the basic requirements out of the way, let's go ahead and run the Docker images and see how they work. To do that, I'll be pulling up a terminal as well as a co-editor to get things working. So scrolling back up, let's go ahead and get the git URL, and we can do that with this code button here. And let's copy the HTTPS URL, so let's copy that, and now let's go ahead and git clone it in the terminal. So while I am on a Mac right now, I'm SSH into my machine learning server, and we can see that I have my 23090s here, two of them there. So I'm on a Linux machine, just want to make that clear, but now let's go ahead and git clone, so git clone and then let's paste the URL we copied earlier okay and now we can enter it and now we can see the, the repo structure here let's go ahead and take a look at the docker file by go ahead and catting that out so do cat docker file and let's take a quick look at this now so something important to note especially for future use cases far into the future is that we're using CUDA 11.7.1 and every so often these images are deprecated. So if you can't find this image, you may need to update this. Many of the remaining things are just to get deep speed working. Um, but something else important to note is the version for deep speed right here. Right now we're on 0.7.7. .7. And as the future goes on, deep speed will improve. There may be new features or there may be some bug in this version we're not aware of yet, but uh, PRs for incrementing this if I neglect to or for correcting the docker image version would be greatly appreciated. Uh, something else to note is that we're installing deep speed MII which is a nice tool for inferencing of the models as well as weight and biases which is a nice tool to allow one to track the progress of fine tuning and other machine learning experiments. Now that we have a basic understanding of what the Docker image is doing and how it's built, let's go ahead and actually build it. To do that, we'll do dot slash build image, and then it'll start building. Uh, here we're pulling the CUDA 11.7.1 image to build off of. Uh, this will take a while, especially the deep speed portion as we're building it from source. Uh, maybe around 10 minutes or so. So I will leave and come back when it's done. So the image is now done building. 
As you can see, it took roughly 17 minutes and 20 seconds to build. And so now let's take a look at running the image and seeing what uh, that does. So let's go ahead and take a look. We can do cat run image sh and we can see here what's going on. So we're running it interactively as we can see with the docker dash it. The IPC equals host means that we are sharing our memory from our host to the Docker container, which is needed if we want to run with multiple GPUs uh, because of how memory is handled. We're passing all the GPUs in. Here we're passing in the cache, so whenever you download a file from Hugging Face for inference or fine tuning or whatever, uh, since we're, if we pass this in, we want to re download it inside of the Docker container. And then uh, we're then voluming in the current directory, which we get here, the current directory, and we mount it on the workspace folder. And then the name of the image is GPT, which we can see right here is GPT latest. So now getting up and running is as simple as just running this program, so which we do by dot backslash run image. And now we are inside of the Docker image. And if we do LS, we can see the fine tuning repo. Let's go ahead and navigate to the fine tuning folder. And inside here, we can see the usual stuff. Some changes are now we have deep speed config for stage one, two, and three. You run those based upon your hardware. So for example, if I want to fine tune GBTJ on my own personal server, which is two RTX 3090s and 128 gigabytes of RAM, I'm going to need to do stage three. But if I have an A180 gigabyte in the cloud, I've personally done this, you can get away with stage one and you'll get a decent speed up. So at this point, if we were to have our data set in this folder, a train file and a validation file, we could go ahead and fine tune. But I want to quickly go ahead and show you two more new features before we do that. One of those new features is talked about in the readme for the fine tuning repo folder. It is the weights and biases support. Weights and biases is a tool to track and visualize your machine learning run. For example, it will show you your evaluation loss over time if you use it. We don't have to use it, and if you don't want to use it, you can just run this command here. But if we do want to use it, we need to log into our Weights and Biases account, get our API key, and paste it into the terminal. I'll show that now. I'm going to hide the API key for obvious reasons, but I'll show you the process to do that. So here we are back at the terminal. I'm going to go ahead and log in with running weights and biases login. And what you'll do is you're going to want to copy and paste this URL into a web browser. It's going to go ahead and show my key when I do this. So I'm going to skip showing that part. But yeah, paste this in, copy it, and then you're going to paste it into the terminal. So I've gone ahead and copied the API key to my clipboard. I'm going to paste it in now and it should be good to go. So when I fine tune it, it will be in the weights and biases now. If you do decide to use weights and biases, by default, the run will be under the name GPT fine tuning. You can change that by exporting the weights and biases project variable to your own value. So if I wanted to name it, say like testing, this would be an example of something to run before fine tuning. Let's go ahead and do that for the video. So I'll do export weight and biases project and I'll make it, uh, I'll call it video update. Okay, so that's done now. Going back to the readme, there's some information on preparing a data set. However, I recommend that if you're trying to build a data set, you watch the video linked here or also it'll come up on screen now. It'll give you more information on how to do so. We then have some documentation on all the different arguments. Some important new ones are the extra tokens file. So for GBTJ, if you want to add tokens that may have some special meaning to your problem, you can go ahead and add them into a text file, which each token being on its own line, and then use this command here to uh, point it to the file, and then it will add that to the tokenizer. Another new feature is the group text flag. By default, every entry in your CSV file will be treated separately rather than combined together. 
and will be padded with pad tokens to make the entries all the same size for training. But if you have a data set that can be thought of as a generalized corpus, such as a whole bunch of general knowledge in a specific domain, whether that be you know Harry Potter books, or whether that be medical knowledge, or Wikipedia knowledge, or just some body of knowledge, uh, you may want to use this flag and it will combine all your CSV entries into one. Now that we have gotten over the project and the new features, let's go ahead and run it and so I can show you that there's no more setup to do as well as I can show you the weights and biases integration. So I'll go ahead and copy this example. This may not be the most ideal example for you, you know, if you have better hardware or worse hardware, but this is, you know, an example. So let's go ahead and paste this in. And I'm going to go ahead and change what we copied here a bit. First of all, I'm going to add a flag called weight decay here and give it a value of 0.1, which is pretty standard. I'm going to lower the gradient accumulation steps a bit. And as well as that, as I'm going to change this num GPUs from one to two, since I have two 3090s. Uh, once I do that, I'll come back, show you the final run, and then we'll run it. So here's the final config for what I'm about to run. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and run it and then come back once it starts actually training. So let's hit enter. So here, after a few minutes, we can see that it's now fine tuning. I'm fine tuning on both the 3090s, as we can see here with the VRAM usage. Uh, so at this point, it's gonna take a while. So I'm gonna come back tomorrow morning and take a look at what model we have, as well as show you guys the weights and biases dashboard and what stats we're tracking and how we know what the state of the model is and whether we are done training or not. So it's been about 12 hours, and as we can see, we've done roughly 180 steps. With every 20 steps, we save the model and evaluate the model, and we are doing one right now. So now let's take a look at the weights and biases integration to see what kind of stats we are getting. So here's the weights and biases page. As we can see, it is under the project name that I set here, video update. And then the run itself will be the output dir. So here it's fine tuned. And some things we can see are some hardware stats such as the GPU power usage, temperature, things with the CPU, the memory, um, the disk, all that kind of stuff. So let's now look at what, in my opinion, is more important, the evaluation metrics. So here we have the evaluation loss, which as you should know, what we're trying to do is get the model with the lowest evaluation loss. And as we can see, this is looking pretty good. Each time we're testing it, the loss is going down and down and down. And eventually it will start going back up and we'll select the best model based upon the model that had the lowest loss. And so this graph right here can be a good indicator of when you should stop training and just take the model and use it. So I think that's where I'm going to stop today's video. If you liked it, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. Consider joining the Discord for help and fun discussions on topics like this. Thank you so much for watching and stay brilliant.